in today's workshop, I'm going to be showing you how to create different ages of faces. So how you get a face looking really old to how you get a face looking like a baby's face and everything in between. My name is Charlotte Allen and you reached my channel, The Felting Alchemist. So the first thing you want to bear in mind when you're creating your sculpture, your person or whatever it is you're making your fairy, you want to think about how old you want this sculpture to look. Do you want it to look youthful? Do you want it to look older? Do you want it to look childlike? That's really important because we need to plan exactly where the facial features need to go for our sculpture. So here I've gone for this youthful look and I'd say I'd put this sculpture or this picture in her 20s, something like that, or her late teens. So in order to create that youthful look, what you want to do first of all is you want to make the head a lot higher than you actually think you need and all of our heads if you took all our hair off they would be a lot higher but our hair kind of covers it over so you want to make your head probably because naturally I think people would tend to draw heads so that they kind of finish here but you want to add probably another quarter to that so you've got that height there for when you add the hair onto your actual sculpture later on so once you've got the shape of your head and with a youthful look you also want to create a slightly narrower cheek area you could even create cheekbones if you wanted to but create a narrower cheek area that's kind of more proportionate and goes down more gradually with the rest of the head and I'll show you what a more youthful look would look like in terms of the shape of the head in a moment but then you want to divide your head up so you want to draw a line down the center and then you want to find your halfway point which for my head that I've drawn is about here and from that halfway point I've taken my next line about half an inch to three quarters of an inch below so you've got this second line here and this is going to be where we're positioning our eyes so you want to have your eyes on starting on the bottom of the line and then obviously going up then I've got my third line and this is going to be where we're going to position the nose and I've positioned my nostrils so that it's halfway between this line here and then lastly I've got my fourth line which is my mouth and I've positioned the mouth so that the top of the lip sits just above or sort of just on that fourth line there and that's creating that lovely youthful look and if you were to put hair on this it would kind of give an even more natural look and really bring all of those features together. So now we're going to move on to a younger looking face and this time I've just positioned everything slightly lower again so here's my halfway point on the head. I've made the, the shape of the face a bit rounder at the bottom to create more of that youthful plumper look that you get with lots of young children. They get these lovely squidgy cheeks. I've made my eyes slightly larger as well because if you look at a young child's face you'll find that their eyes are disproportionately larger to the rest of their face and I think it gives them that lovely cute look and then we turn into adults and then we all become you know not as cute looking which is very sad. Um, so you've got you've got your cute eyes there and I've made my pupils a little bit larger as well just to kind of really take on that lovely youthful appearance. Again, I've made the head a little bit higher so we can add the hair later on. Um, don't be tempted, like I said before, to make the head shorter because when you add your hair and your facial features later on, it is going to look a bit odd and all your features are gonna look a bit disproportionate to the rest of the head. So here I've got some examples of different ages that you can achieve with your needle felting. So the first one we're gonna look at is this baby face. Here. And I actually took a bit of inspiration from Boss Baby for this. So what I tend to do when I'm planning anything is I'll go on Pinterest and I'll find different things that I think will work with a sculpture, compile them all together on one of my boards and then take bits and pieces from those from those pins that I've saved and incorporate them into a sculpture. So this is kind of inspired by Boss Baby, this particular head here. And as you can see, I've got obviously this larger head area here. The eyes are quite close together and I've made these pupils very large. The nose is quite small and it's also quite wide as well. I wanted to create kind of like a wide babyish kind of nose and then I've created this very tiny mouth underneath. I've also made his cheeks really squidgy as well. So he's got this lovely full looking face to him to give him that really lovely babyish look. And then I've just added a few touches of the brown merino just to create a bit more definition around the eyes and the eyebrows. So going on to the next stage, which is more of the younger child looking sculpture, I've created this head. So as you can see here, I've positioned the eyes a little bit higher and I've made them a little bit smaller as well. I've created a very small mouth and then we've got this lovely small button nose here as well. 
so she's looking very cute and everything's kind of still quite low down and quite full in the cheeks so I haven't gone with cheekbones or anything like that because obviously children don't have cheekbones so I've kept it all quite nice and wide and squidgy. So the next head is this slightly older looking head that I've created. Once again everything's positioned a little bit higher. I've still got this height here so that I can add hair later on. I've made her eyes a bit more cat-like and I've kind of made them a little bit further apart compared to the baby's eyes. Everything in terms of the features are a bit more spread over her head, whereas obviously on the baby's face, they're a little bit more concentrated down to the lower portion of the head. And then finally, I've created my much older face, and this was a really fun one to make. I've made the eyes significantly smaller to the rest of the proportion of the face, just to create that older look. And then I've gone in with my needles and I've created lines around the chin area here, where you'd kind of naturally get jowls on an older face. And then also I've created some lines around the head and the mouth and nose area as well. I've made the nose a lot narrower and a lot sharper to really kind of focus on getting this looking a lot more mature. And then the head shape itself, I've kind of focused on, whilst I've got these jowls here, it's a bit slimmer and not as wide compared to this baby's face here. Or for instance, the child's face here as well. It's a lot, it's a lot straighter. So that is how I plan out my heads before I make any kind of project for people or fairies or anything like that. I also use this technique in animals as well because sometimes you might want to create a more youthful, childlike animal, or you might want to create more of an adult-looking animal, say for instance, a dog or a cat or something like that. So I really hope you found this useful and please give it a go because I think by planning out your sculptures like this, it just makes life a lot easier for you when you come to make them with the wool. So please put in the comments below if you did find this helpful or if you have any questions in relation to this and I will see you tomorrow for more felting hints and tips. Bye!